John 20 from the Pew Bibles, if you like, follow along, page 1686, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. The Word of God for the people of God. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive any one of their sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas also known as Dithymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Through the door, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. The word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Eternal loving God, sometimes it's easy to lose faith in you. And sometimes, Father God, life situations are very thorny. But Lord, we know that when we keep the faith and really truly believe in the power that you have, all things are possible. Now, Lord, I pray, open our ears, but more than that, open our hearts that the word this morning that comes may resonate in each and every heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Christians around the world have spent a lot of time over the past week pondering the gospel accounts of Jesus' death and his resurrection. And during resurrection week, we read and heard the familiar stories of the triumph and entry, the last supper, the crucifixion, and then with a thud, the resurrection on Easter Sunday. The story ends. Right? No. Not quite. While the Gospel of Matthew and Mark end shortly after the resurrection, the Gospel of Luke and John Gospel provide an extra detail about what Jesus was doing the time between his resurrection and his ascension into heaven. 
If we allow the gospel reading to stop at the resurrection, we are missing out on several interesting <coughs> events that help us to believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus was alive on this earth after his resurrection for 48 days. The accounts of his resurrected life defies Ripley's believe it or not. Christ's bodily life upon this earth can be seen as both physically and spiritually. And during our Lord's afterlife, biblical accounts indicate hundreds of people saw him up front and in person. One account indicates that our Lord appeared to over 500 people at one time. Let us unplug from the world that his resurrection was nonsense and plug into the gospel that turns disbelief into belief. I don't want to belay the point, but we Christians need to understand the significance of the Lord's resurrection. Our sermonic title this morning is The Significance of the Lord's Resurrection. Why? Because we are called as Christians to live a resurrection life. You heard Sally this morning read all of John 2. I didn't expect her to do that. It wasn't in the program. Yeah, I did But John 2, the second, second John, tells us a lot about what is expected of Christians if you truly say you're a Christian. And unlike other religions, and I know I didn't write any of this down, but I have to say it anyway. Unlike other religions, people live by their faith. And we just live by a tag. We just call ourselves Christians. And every once in a while, when we do something that we think we should be praised for and receive some glory and I'll be anointed for. But aren't we supposed to be that way all the time? Aren't we supposed to be loving towards one another? By way of background, there were at least 12 or 13 sightings of our Lord within the first week. The first week, his pulse awakened from the dead like nobody else. Yes, our Lord brought people back to life, but guess what? They died again. They died again. And the Bible doesn't spend any time telling us what happened to Lazarus, or the little boy or the little girl that Christ brought back to life. But they pass. They pass. And finally, those whom the Lord appeared to are really credible witnesses. And this is how God puts this thing together. You know, what would we do without women? I often joke, if you want to get the story out there, telephone, telegram, yeah, there's a guy, tell him. <laughs> it's the truth. So, let's take a look at this, and it's part one, and, uh, and you will understand. He appeared to Mary Magdalene as a gardener. And how fitting that this woman was chosen as the first to see Jesus, for she was the one of the most grateful to him for what he had done for her. He delivered seven demons out of her, and from that time on, she became one of those who stayed close by the Lord. The third day after Jesus' death, early that Sunday morning, she and two other women came to the tomb where he was lying to put spices on his body. But they forgot. They forgot his words. 
On the third day, I'm going to do what? I'm going to get up and walk around earth a little bit. But they found the tomb unsealed and empty, and Mary and the other women ran to tell the disciples. And when Peter and John heard the news, they ran to the tomb, but one of them was faster than the other one. I guess it helps to be young. <laughs> Sure enough, the body of Jesus was gone. I'm sure they were confused and wondered what happened to it, and they went home bewildered. Depending on how you count the sightings, because some literature says there were a total of 12, and the other literature says there were 13 sightings, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, Salome, and Mary, the mother of Jesus and James. And at first, all three women together. But apparently, Mary Magdalene somehow broke away from the other two women. And I suppose she too was the fastest runner. Because she was the one who told the disciples first. However, when the other two women were going to tell the disciples that the body of the Lord was missing, Jesus suddenly appeared to them and greeted them. And unlike Mary and Magdalene, they knew him right away. He greeted them and they ran in turn immediately and responded and ran to him and they held his feet and they worshiped. Then, Jesus appeared to two disciples in the road to Emmaus. We talked about that several centuries ago. Then our Lord appeared to Peter. And see, this is where the story gets a little fuzzy. Because before the Lord showed up again, before the brothers from Emmaus got a chance to get back to tell the disciples, Somehow, our Lord appears to Peter. Just before the disciples were telling their story of how they met the stranger on the road, and then their eyes were open. Then Jesus appeared to the ten, except for Thomas, who was not there. And then Jesus appeared before the disciples a second time with Thomas being present. And Thomas was not with the disciples the first appearance that Sunday evening. It was a week later, almost a week later. And he gave Thomas a good opportunity to believe. He said to him, put your fingers here in my womb and my hands and touch the wounds here in my side. But you know what Thomas said? Lord, I don't have to do a thing but praise your holy name. I see you. And that's what we need to do sometime when we have disbelief. You know, facts aren't always the facts. People throw them out there like it's little because we do not take the time to investigate. But in this instance, Thomas said, I need no further proof, Lord. I need no further proof. And later, Jesus appeared to seven of the disciples on the shore of Galilee. You remember that story, don't you? They were out fishing. They weren't catching anything. And Jesus said, hey, throw your net on the other side. Okay. And we got a haul so great. And Peter was so excited because he recognized the Lord. I had a hard time seeing Yvonne back there this morning. But Peter, wow, he recognized Jesus. And this is true. He actually stripped, swam and show. People don't want to read that part in scriptures, but it's there. To greet our Lord. And Jesus was 
very accommodating. He says, you know what, Peter? I love you. Let's have a fish fry. <laughs> yeah. And much later, he appeared to the apostles. Now, this was a plan of me. He appeared to the apostles on the mountain of Galilee. The appearance was not unexpected like the others because he was, this meeting was prearranged with them. Recall the contents of this meeting, the Great Commission. That's what it was. Jesus commissioned them to go out into all nations and make disciples. Then he appeared to over 500 brethren in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. When Paul tells us that Jesus was seen by Cephas and then by the 12 and by 500 brothers at once. And thus it seems logical that this group would have seen him sometime after in the next 20 or so days meeting on the mountain with the 11. Can you imagine Jesus now? He's up on the mountain. Oh, he's up on the mountain. Galilee. He's in the sea. Let's run. Let's go see what he's talking about. They were excited. Just as I'm excited. And then he appeared to the apostles and ate a meal. He ate a meal. He ate a meal. Wait a minute. Dead men don't bleed. Dead men don't eat. I'm hungry. And when the first time he told them he was hungry, look like every time he shows up, guess what? Our Lord is hungry. It's proof. It's proof that he exists. And then last, almost, the ascension. There was a meal that he had again, as we're going to have today. And finally, after his ascension, he appeared to who? Who did he appear to after he ascended? Paul, the great writer of the New Testament, who wrote at least 12 or 13 of the chapters. And he appeared to Paul on the road to where? Sometimes when I hear the story, I think of the difficult times in my life, whether I was at war with someone or actually physically fighting a war, and I didn't know whether I was going to make it or not. I'm going to be honest with you. If it had not been for the Lord, my Savior, I would not have made it. If it had not been for the Lord my Savior, I would not have been in the right frame of mind I am today. Because so many of my brothers who were there, who fought with me in the first war, then the Gulf War, are suffering today. That's because I believed. Why does Jesus' resurrection matter? If Jesus really did return to life, which he did, his promises are true. He is the Messiah, the Son of God, and if we want to know God and have the eternal life, we too must believe that he is the Son of God. But our belief must not be like Thomas. It must not be by the man who says, Lord, help me with my unbelief, but I believe. That sounds like an antithesis. I believe, but yet I don't believe. Make up your mind, man. We need to make up our mind, too, whether or not we believe or not. We are called, we all are called to live a resurrection life daily, which means our lives must be a transformation of intentional and rational and action. 
And although some of you have already surmised the meaning of the resurrection of our Lord, I implore you to stand by for the importance, the significance of the Lord's resurrection when I come upon to you. Let us pray. Father God, we are thankful, Lord, that you indeed have risen. But more than that, Lord God, we thank you for your spirit, your counselor that you left with us. And Lord, you walk with us, you walk ahead of us, and you have covered our tracks to the point it appears that there's only one set of footprints, and they belong to you, Lord. Now help us with our belief in such a way that we too can go out among our brothers and sisters in the world and tell them the story about the great things you have done. Lord, help us. Help us in the hour of this need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.